Hi, this is Renaud Joran from Sophist, and I'm going to explain the scope and give a quick introduction to this technical standard IEC 62368-1. And first, let's simplify things. Why is this important? When you look at product compliance, you look at things like safety, sustainability, and some other requirements. Well, this standard is all about safety of users. And if we look at it a little bit differently, this is for electrical products only. All right, so when we look at electrical products, there's a number of different requirements, okay? Electromagnetic compatibility, RF spectrum usage, this is typical for a lot of electronic products. Electrical safety, don't give an uh, electrical shock to a user. Mechanical safety, don't cut the, 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 the user's skin or something. Thermal safety, don't have very hot surfaces, for example, uh, that the users might touch and then they, get, they might get skin burned. And there's a lot of others. And um, this standard is trying to cover these uh, safety elements. Okay, I'm trying to keep it simple here, give an overview. So why is this technical standard important? Well, if a product falls under the scope, and I'll go into that right after these few slides, if, it, if a product is in the scope of this standard, it will need to pass some tests, usually uh, done in a laboratory, as described in this technical standard, okay, for the EU and UK markets, it's the low voltage directive, which actually is not really for low voltage products. It's up to uh, something like 600 volt or something. <laughs> so uh, low and uh, let's say medium voltage products, okay. And uh, radio electric directive if it applies, right, because it includes LVD. Okay, for USA, well, the OSHA has a requirement, it's absolutely compulsory to comply with this standard for workplace equipment if it plugs into a wall socket, okay. Now, retailers, insurance companies, and so on might uh, also require that for other products, but really what is mandatory as per the, the official requirements is, is this is for workplace equipment. In Canada, it's for all equipment. Otherwise, it's pretty similar, okay, and so on. Now, yeah, coming back to EU and UK, for example, passing laboratory tests that are based on this technical standard give you the presumption of conformity for this product, right? And as long as the product is unchanged, you still have the presumption of conformity, so you can issue your declaration of conformity based on based on that, right? Risk analysis and lab tests, etc., etc. So what is the scope? Let's get to that. What kind of products need to comply with this technical standard? Basically, all IT and AV products, right? Information technology, and communication products and audio video products okay so this is very very wide if you look at the declarations of conformity of companies like apple for example uh, they pretty much all mention this standard at the top of the list okay and also it's not just the finished product it's mostly about finished products but also the components that are intended to be used with those products and that might be for example sold separately uh, also need to pass uh, lab tests based on these standards. So, for example, a power supply to be used in a, in a laptop. A laptop is an IT product, right? So, in Annex A of the standard, the latest version, they give some examples. Okay, so, for example, a lot of consumer electronic equipment, audio, video, music, uh, musical instruments, okay, as long as it's electrical, basically, uh, it falls into this, like, video cameras, uh, network surveillance cameras, video games, blah, blah, blah. There's a long, long list, right? Okay, data and text processing machines, so uh, tablets, smartphones, and so on and so forth. Printers, including 3D printers, as long as it's basically uh, for the general purpose of uh, information technology, communication, and so on. And then it keeps going. So calculators, yeah, photocopying machines, a lot of office equipment here, all the way to fax, yeah, phones, and so on, right? So this is very wide. 
Now just a few more points about this standard just as a high level intro. You might find, oh, there's an IEC 62368-1 standard, but you can also find an EN 62368-1. And also, for example, CEIEN 62365 for Italy, and so on and so forth for every country. And you will find maybe UL or UL slash CSA 62368-1, etc. Okay, what is the difference? Basically, it's the same standard, however, it gets republished and there are minor differences, right? So, for example, when the Cinelec for the European Union and still uh, as I'm shooting this video end of 2023 also for the UK they, they change for example the references they write the references to EN standards instead of for example IEC standards uh, they, they make a number of small changes okay it's basically the same standard however it's better to test against the IEC standard when you go to a lab if you intend to sell the product for example, in the EU, but also in the US. Because if you test against the EN 62368-1 standard, you might have a problem then going to the USA and saying, oh, but this is the IEC standard, looks it is the same. Right? It's better to, um, to test against the IEC standard and then go into the different countries and, and show, well, look, I tested against the IEC standard. They, they will all basically accept it. Okay. Now, there are some countries... For example, Japan has J62368-1, and they added a lot of requirements. They are very, very uh, uptight uh, when it comes to uh, lithium batteries, and I understand why. So th there's a lot of extra requirements sometimes okay, in different countries. And there's a few countries that do not recognize this technical standard for conformity, right, for compliance, such as India, South Korea, and so on. And finally... The last point I wanted to cover is that there are there have been four editions. This comes from the IEC website, and you can see version uh, sorry edition four, IEC 62368-1 2023. Okay, is the latest one is the latest edition. Now, for some reason, edition three was better than edition two, but it was not written, let's say, 100% in the proper way, so it never got republished and accepted in the European Union and UK uh, and hopefully again I'm speaking end of 2023 hopefully they are reviewing edition 4 and hopefully they will uh, they will republish edition 4 and really adopt it but anyway in any case edition 4 is, is better than edition 3 which was better than edition 2 and, and so on and so forth so it's better in general to work always based on the latest edition of the standard 2023 version Alright, and that's it. I hope it's helpful and clear.